What's up, everyone? I am James Bainey, and I am here with Kyle D. Larson, and we are here to talk about a spoiler-filled book discussion on Dr. Afra, the new audiobook drama. Stick around. All right, Kyle, we're here, and this is a this is a different one, right? A lot different yeah, than yeah. Uh, what we normally do. We did not actually discuss. We were not doing this at the time um, of the 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 Dooku Jedi Lost novelization or whatever you want to call it. The an audio mm-hmm. drama they call it audio. a Star Wars audiobook original, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't cover that. This is our first time doing this. Uh, but the second time Star Wars proper has done this. Um, yes. And uh, like I said, it's interesting because what, I'm going to get through the stats of the book. And it's funny because we say read by, but it's read by like a laundry list of people because every character, you know, uh, is played by a different person. You know, sometimes they double up. I heard a lot of the same voices, same actors, I think, doing different characters and stuff. But how, ma- yeah, how many people yeah. do you think were involved in this? Like 20 different uh, narrators maybe i think there let's see there's uh it looks like nine nine or ten so now we do have we do have mark thompson kind of sneaking in as darth vader and i suspect that he filled in for there's a lot of smaller roles that pop up that i thought might have been him um because he's he's pretty well versed in the star wars universe so when listening to this book i there was a particular voice that i was like oh i remember this from the catalyst novel so i went back and looked at the catalyst novel and it was jonathan davis who did it oh and i was like i mean probably 12 different characters in this book i was like that's the same guy that's the same guy wow (laughs) i can hear it like so often yeah 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 (laughs) the producer's ear um, yeah, this was a fun one. Let, let's review it before we get too too big into the stats. Um, or actually, no, let's, let's just go. Let's talk about a little bit about the book just itself. Um, Dr. Afra, a Star Wars audiobook original, uh, was released July 21st, 2020. Um, it was written by Sarah Kuhn. Um, this is, of course, uh, an adaptation from the comics. So written is kind of loose, but she adapted this novel and obviously added a lot more to it as well. Yeah, um, I, it was read time. by, uh, like I said, a lot of different people. But the voice of Dr. Afra, the main one that we, we stick with is Emily Wuzeller, Um And she obviously did a great job. Um, the book yeah. is published by Random House Audio. Interestingly enough, uh, there's no you know, normal no, book Del publisher Ray, here. No, yeah. Del Rey yeah. Lucasfilm yeah. Uh, press or whatever. Um, it's just random house audio this time. And of course the timeline is uh, after a new hope, uh, but then before empire. So this is pretty much like right after a new hope. It just kind of picks up um, yeah, you know, yeah, in, the, in the time just immediately after. Um, so let's, let's get into a little bit. Of, uh, let's talk about our, um, initial thoughts and score uh what what were your what were your thoughts on this book and uh what did you rate it i loved this book very much um i had so much fun listening to it um and i've been an afro fan for a long time so i you know obviously i'm coming to this with you know i've wanted some sort of this isn't live action but it really is kind of like the next best thing that we would get to like a live action or animated because emily Wu zeller did such a good job it sounded exactly like i kind of had afro's voice in my head so i was i was really happy to do that um so i i gave it a nine out of ten which is that's a high score for me i've only given a few of those but that I just, for me, it really, really touched me because this character has been a lot to me and I know it means a lot to a lot of fans and they just, they handled this adaptation plus the stuff that the, the uh, other stuff that we'll talk about that Sarah Kuhn added in there is literally was stuff on my checklist of like things that I had hoped stories that I hoped that we got, especially the, the sauna and the Afro romance. So, um, I, I felt very good about this, about this audio book. And I, I really think that if people haven't haven't read the comics before and they they pick up this audiobook that there really is going to be a lot of intrigue in the character and a lot of interest in in where she's going from here yeah how absolutely. about you yeah no um i'm with you i i gave it an 8.2 um which is still really high up like on my general high, scale yeah. um i you know to compare it to a couple other things that are that are around that rating for me the black spire book uh crash of fate 
uh, Bloodline, if you know that one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and these all, I think, are generally categorized as, as pretty decent books. So, you know, I, I definitely have it up there. Um, yeah, about about Afra, I actually think that this book, and I, I say actually, I think it's pretty understandable. This book does an even better job of helping me understand the Afra character. You think you have a pretty good idea when you're reading the comics because of her dialogue and stuff, but there's there's a lot to be said about how the character is spoken um, and the way the dialogue is said and, you know, kind of like, almost kind of like sarcasm in a way. Like, you write the line of sarcasm, it doesn't work as better as somebody being like, oh, really? You know? Yeah. Yeah, because because totally. you hear the tone and you're like, oh, man, there's a there's a sass to what this person is saying. And um, oftentimes you could be like, man, they're a little bit more lighthearted in this dire situation than I thought they were. Um, and a lot of times, too, it was interesting because um, I had read all the comics, but I I listened to this book and then I went back and looked at the comics and I was like, Oh yeah. Like this book is totally is it does a really good job at, at um telling, you know, her perspective of those events uh in a very streamlined way and it really kind of makes you um I know it's only been, ever been a couple years, but it kind of makes you nostalgic for those comics and in a sense you're like, "Man, these are really good stories that uh, that a lot of people I think are just kind of like sleeping on and yeah. now we're being told it from a different perspective, but, uh, it's still very true to Canon and everything. Yeah. I, I definitely like this book a lot and I, I would recommend it. it. Another good thing about it too, is that it's only like five or six hours, you know, that you probably spend yeah. on it. So, yeah. um, you know, for a lot of people have maybe like a 30 minute commute that you're probably done in like two weeks or something, you know, you'll probably get into it it's too. Yeah. I, that's what I listened to. It was commuting and while I was at work and, mm -hmm. and at home too, but it was, it is, it really kind of captures you too. It really kind of, it helps you, I mean, for lack of a better term, escape, um, you know, from whatever you might be doing and it's um you know again credit to the writing and to the cast the cast is is wonderful yeah what would you say was your favorite part of the book well um the biggest thing that i wanted once i found out sauna was a part of the story i really wanted to find out what that relationship was and i think probably the moment in the cell where afra is really like we've you know, and going beyond the series, I won't talk too much about like where where she ends up, you know, after this, because I think once people hear this, they're going to want to like read more of her story and, and I'll let them find that out themselves. But she sure. does have relationships with other people, romantic relationships. And one of the biggest things is you don't she's really afraid of being vulnerable and really afraid of uh, kind of exposing herself um, to to attachment and, and to being loved and. Um, she kind of breaks down at this moment in her cell where she's she's been recording, memorializing and talking about her feelings for Sana and she, she really starts crying because she doesn't, she's like, I might never get to tell this person how I felt about them, even though it does, you know, it's not like she's trying to like get back together with Sana or anything, but she's like, I just want this person to know that like they didn't, they, you know, they, they weren't as disposable as I made them feel. They weren't as, you know, uh, like I loved them, I cared for them. It was hard for me too when I left. I just did that because that's that's who I was, and like I didn't know what to do at the time, you know. And and she just really like she embraces like her vulnerabilities and that, which for me that was huge. You don't really ever see her do that in the comics. Once in a while she does, and those are usually my favorite moments in the comics. So that by far for me was was the 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 clinker, the clincher. So. Yeah, you know, um, and we'll get into, you know, when we get to in, more into the, the the spoiler discussion and stuff like mm -hmm. that, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the, the interesting thing for me when I had to pick a favorite part, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking like, man, this, you know, with a lot of books, there's like sections where I'm like, I'm just lost and confused sometimes. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And this, this book really reads well and, and keeps you involved. And I never really felt like they were like, 
super high points or anything like that. It just was kind of like always there. Um, so I had to pick a spot that I, I legitimately laughed out loud. And uh, that was anytime she was talking to Boba Fett, which, um, which I think, <laughs> yeah. well, actually, I think she only talks to Boba Fett once, but she refers to him later in the book. Um, but her conversation with Boba Fett was just great because it doesn't happen in the doesn't happen in the comics, no. but you see it here, and she's like convincing this information out of him, and the way she's doing it is. I don't know, pretty pretty funny because I think she kind of refers to and talks about Boba Fett how maybe like a fan who doesn't understand why Boba Fett is so popular. Yeah. Did you get very, that very much. vibe? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, she's like yeah. Boba Fett. Like basically she's we joke like, around this about deal? on yeah. the resistance broadcast all the time, but it's like a she says Boba Fett, oh, he's so overrated. You know, yeah, that's right. He only shows up like randomly and 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 doesn't even really do anything cool, you know, and stuff. She like the way she talks about Boba Fett is very like how fans think of Boba Fett. It's very meta. Yes. Yes. Very meta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I actually thought that was pretty hilarious. And there's I, I I should have written it down, but there's even a line in there specifically that I was like, there's no way that is not exactly what the author is intending with this line. It perfectly describes his reputation and fandom. Um, but uh, I would say that was probably my favorite part. But let's 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 break it down. Right. We're going. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I know we've technically said a few things, you know, about the book, but let's let's just go full on spoilers now. Um, this is the discussion on the book. We're assuming you've you've read it, or in this case, listened to it. Um, I don't know what I mean. Like, uh, you know, what did you think? So we're talking a little bit about the Sana relationship that 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 played out the way you wanted. Like, did you like how they met and how they um, I don't know came together? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was uh, I I thought it was really touching. Like it was because, you know, we were introduced to Afra's, you know, she had a pretty rough childhood. Um, mm -hmm. you know, her parents, she saw her parents fighting a lot. You know, her father was this is this accomplished archaeologist who all of a sudden became obsessed with this really obscure, you know, Jedi force um order called the Order of Espectu, and eventually that broke up her parents' marriage <clears throat> and you know, Afra saw her her mom murdered essentially, um, and she's ended up at this school, this University of Barleth, and she just sees this person one day that strikes her, and you kind of see her, you know, infatuation go to romantic interest, to them having a romance, to them having a, you know, you get the sense when you when you last hear them together in that that era that they had a pretty strong relationship, that they had a firm relationship. And then Afra, you know, tr you know, ended up leaving, which is that's that's a total Afra thing to do is just to kind of get up in the morning and and disappear. Um, mm -hmm. So I it did it did play out how I wanted it to. I mean, and I, I liked, too, that, you know, Sarah, Sarah Kuhn, um, she put um, a lot of nice moments or not nice moments, but she did put a little bit more dialogue kind of during the rebel jail reunion where they meet up with one another a lot later in life um toward kind of like more towards the end of the book so i i felt good about that i really did um uh like that um i also liked the the fact that they took the time to kind of outline more what had happened with her parents where it's just kind of sprinkled in through the the comics you don't really know you know what exactly it was um, you know, and I think in the series, in her series, in the first few issues, her dad just shows up and you're like, who yeah. is this guy? And, and, and you, you learn a little bit more about him, but this made it more personal and, and hearing Afra talk about it made it more personal. And again, like her, you could, you could sense her vulnerabilities. You could sense her grief. You could sense her trauma around all these events of losing people in her life. So, um, that, those were the things that I liked mostly was just kind of hearing these, you know, we hear a lot from Afro's point of view in the comics, but to hear it verbalized and to hear the expression and 
uh, was was really good. And you know, I can't say enough good things about Emily Wu Zeller. Like she really did capture the voices. I thought it, and I also thought that Nicole Lewis did a fantastic job as as Sana for the the counterpart in that relationship. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's really. I mean, okay, we you know, I don't think Leia sounded that great. No, um, so bad, bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think she was cast particularly well. I think they, and you know, I think you mentioned even too before, like before we were recording, that the, the intent there might have been just like an homage because it was someone who had voiced Padme in the past. Yeah, Catherine Tabor. Um, yeah, um, but I, I did find it odd. I was like, I, it's hard to follow who's who's talking right here because it just totally didn't sound like Leia in my opinion. Um, yeah. That being said, though pretty much everything across the board is great casting like um i felt very often that you know you could really tell who was talking um even even there's a lot of conversations between sana and dr afra and while they have similar voices there was something extra added to each of them that i was able to depict them apart pretty quickly um in just about every situation um, and that yeah. is one of the bigger problems I had with the Dooku stuff as I was like, I cannot tell you who's talking yeah. 90% of the yeah. time. They all sound like the same in a way. And I, maybe that's because of the accents or whatnot, but this book does a really good job at, at doing that. And, uh, you know, triple zero, man, I, <laughs> yeah, I was very thrown by his voice at first. And I was like, so this is what he sounds like. And then by the end of it, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say the end of it, but, you know, the whole scene where he impersonates, he gets the spray paint, you know, and they, uh, he impersonates C-3PO. And I'm like, oh, weird. He sounds a lot different than C-3PO. You know, and I think yeah. maybe, I think maybe that's part of it is that I had this in my head that this is a protocol droid, so he's saying these, like, bad lines right these evil sayings but he sounds like c-3po when you hear him in the yeah, book same. you go no he doesn't sound like c-3po at all and when he like uh, 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 upped his voice to sound like c-3po or whatever i was like oh this is weird now because i totally hear the difference yeah um so i yeah his his voice was interesting and, and a lot of fun when when it uh first n- turned on um yeah you know, going back to what you were saying about the relationship between Sana and and Afra, I, you know, it's interesting because I almost feel like the author did the best that they could in kind of a rough situation, which is, hey, we want you to write the backstory and the love story of of these two characters, um, and here is here are two facts about Afra that we want you to know. She's very disloyal, but she loves so deeply this one person. And it's like those those themes to me sometimes clash. If she loves this person so deeply, why is she disloyal to that person? And I think the author's kind of going, I didn't write that. So I got to kind of figure out why... I have to write how much Afra loves Sana, but then I also have to make her be like, eh, whatever. You know, so th- I felt like there was a little bit of a clash there, but it was done well. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's an emotional thing happening there that, that doesn't quite make much sense. Like, you know, it's somebody saying like, oh man, I love my wife. That's why I'm leaving her. And it's like, that doesn't make sense. So you're trying to write that story and try to make sense of that story. And, you know, you do about as good as you can. But it is kind of an odd thing that she... I I very much believe sincerely that she actually does sincerely love Sana. Yeah. But Um. she ditches all the time. So, and and I know that's like an emotional thing too, right? What what do you think? Yeah, I was going to say... I don't know if it's like disloyalty necessarily, but it's like I mean it is in a and it is a form of disloyalty. But I think like the <clears throat> the way that that her 
insecurities about not only herself, but about just the state of the galaxy and, and things. And even though this was much, you know, she was much younger, um, you know, maybe just the kind of like the things fall apart, you know, pessimism, looking at it and just being scared at that age of getting into like a young or getting into a relationship is are kind of that's how I interpreted is what drove her away. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's like you get this kind of, you know, uh, kind of lover. They, you know, they start out as lovers and then, you know, by the end of the book, they all by the middle of the book, they're kind of enemies. And then by the end of the book, they've kind of forgiven one another in a way, you know, that that love isn't there. That love can exist, but, um, but they've just, they've kind of gone their own ways and they've kind of forgiven at that point or made peace in a way. Yeah. I mean, cause definitely there's, there's like the scene where, she's trying to escape from the sunspot prison. And then Leia's like, I'm not going to let you go, but I never said anything about her. And Sana, you know, kicks her into the pod and hits the button and, and she goes. And I think that's just like a, a simple way of saying like, no matter how bad you treat me, I can't actually go through with killing you. Yeah. Even Um, though she says she wants to. Yes. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> I mean, there's that. Yeah. Like there's that scene, you know, where the, where the guy, I forget his name like right now, but he's, he's like trying to say the only way that, that I'm going to believe that you're good enough to lead this rebellion, Leia, is if you, yeah. you killed Afra. I mean, she's clearly a known Imperial, uh, whatever, co- not conspirator. Is that the right word? Conspirator? Um, yeah. She's yeah. clearly working with Vader. She's clearly working with the Empire. You eliminate her. You eliminate a big problem. And Leia's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And Sana's like, we should do it. <laughs> yeah. Sana's like, like, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> we, like, we should yeah. kill Afra. I agree. She sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and she needs to be put down. And uh, and then yet a little while later, she actually does go ahead and um, like save her, get her off of, out of Sunspot prison. Um, so... Yeah, that I mean that relationship is still there, um, you know, and we're talking and about there's this more book. in future issues too. Yeah, that's yeah. the one thing I'll tease. So, um, so so I don't know what what else stuck out about the book. Did, did you like the fact that it was a retelling of the comic series, or was that weird to you? I did actually. You know, going into it, I wasn't sure what I would think when I because when I when it was announced, I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then when they're like, oh, it's, you know, a retelling of the comics, I was like, oh, I don't, you know, I I was still excited, but I was like, I wish we were getting an original story. But this, I was pleasantly surprised. It was a total refreshing way to like revisit these stories to, you know, to go back. I mean, they're like, I think I said to you, there's literally points in the book where you can actually pick up the comic book and be reading it. And, you know, Sarah uh, Kuhn has, um, has put, Karen Gillan's writing in with her own writing so perfectly you can actually follow along with the bubbles in the picture so that was like there were a couple chapters in the audiobook where I was doing that and and you also pointed out too like you're you know you're re-experiencing the story and you're picking up things that you didn't before because you're seeing it from a totally different perspective yeah. so that didn't bother me at all it ended up yeah, not bothering it is me kinda, at all but I was I went in yeah. not not knowing what to think so I'm a hundred percent with you. Like I, I can't, yeah. I can't, um, say anything less. I mean, I was exactly the same way. You know, you look at, you look at them and you're saying, Hey, we're doing this Dr. Afra thing. And you're like, Oh, that sounds awesome. And they're like, it's a retelling of a story you already know of Dr. Afra. And you're like, Oh, okay. I mean, I guess that'll be all right. But I actually think the way that they did it, is like the perfect way to do it because yeah it it is a retelling of those events but with her view on it and a bunch of new scenes or new details added to those same events and then on top of it you are straight up getting original content which is all of this stuff with with sana and her parents and a lot of the stuff that happened in the past um you know it's it it definitely is like its own story and it's um i don't know it it almost feels like if you read the vader comic and then you read this and people say do you need to read that and you're like nah it's just a retelling of the thing i almost feel like it's the exact opposite i say read this book 
learn more about Dr. Afra, learn the character, and then go investigate these comics because you're just like, there's so much happening, you know? Yeah. Like when you're Tons. when you are reading those comics, you're you're at times you're learning the perspective of Dr. Afra. At times you're you're on the perspective of Leia. At times you're on the perspective of Luke or Luke with Han. Uh, at times you're in the perspective of Vader. Um, so it's like all these different things and all these different novels. There's the, the Vader series, the Star Wars series, um, then Vader's, uh, like the Vader down s- split thing. Yeah, the Vader down stuff. Yeah, and it's just, there's so much stuff that is all like kind of connected in this um, that in a weird way it gets kind of confusing. And this book really goes, hold on, let's just take a breath. We want you to know about Dr. Afra. This is Dr. Afra's story boom streamline there it is it's all it's all in one place and they just did such a good job at doing that um oh yeah yeah i thought um it was interesting too with you know because it's a different medium but like you kind of pick up different themes too like it's it's really interesting how like afra you know when she's going back into the past and thinking about her parents or thinking about sauna you know it triggers these vulnerabilities and we also know like from reading the comic series too and we do it in the audiobook that Vader is looking into his past. You know, he's 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 kind of this is like a huge watershed moment for him finding mm-hmm. out that Luke is still alive. Um, and this is kind of what, in my opinion, this is kind of the beginning of when the light really starts to push through whatever's left of Anakin and whatever's left of that Skywalker, you know, legacy or, mm-hmm. or Padme in his heart that really starts to kind of push through to them. So there's that really interesting parallel that I'd never picked up on in the comic book, you know, cause we didn't get Afra's perspective, but I'm seeing it here in this story. And, and it, you know, it's really interesting how these two characters came together like that. Cause she, yeah. Cause she's like, she's talking to Vader and, and Vader's like, I need you to go on a mission. He's like, she's like, Oh, he's scary. But then she yeah. goes on the mission. She finds out that he's looking for this boy and then when she comes back and reports that to him, she's like investigating his reaction to what she's saying. And then she's trying to process it all. She's like, she's like, weird. I was talking about the Queen of Naboo, and I was like, she must have been some she must have been someone really special. And then she like gauges her reaction or gauges Vader's reaction to that statement and and starts to put together like he had I think he had like an emotional reaction to her name. I think they knew each other, you know? Yeah. Totally. (laughs) Yeah. And, and it's interesting. You put that, you said that too, because, um, I think, you know, this particular time frame in the comics, there's a lot of really good panels, um, that people talk about some of the best of star Wars comics have ever been. There's one that's not in this book, but it is in the Vader down. It's during the section when Vader's kind of like missing on this planet. He has that panel where he says, uh, they're like, Vader, put down your weapon. You're surrounded. And he's like, the only thing I'm surrounded by is fear and dead men. <laughs> dead men. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's that is fr- about that, that one. that's, you know, takes place during this, uh, during this book as well. And, uh, but the, but mm-hmm. another big one to me, and this actually is in the book is, the scene where Vader or I'm sorry, Boba Fett shows up and gives him the news and says, he yeah, bested that's me. Mine. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. He bested me. And, uh, you know, I wasn't able to get a whole lot from him. I wasn't able to capture him. Just the last name. And he's like, well, what's the last name? And he goes, Skywalker. And it just shows this panel of Vader looking out into space. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like such a good point the in the goosebumps. comics. Yeah. But, but you are exactly right. I feel like, everything since revenge of the Sith has been Vader just doing being Vader totally doesn't really have a whole lot of like memories and stuff like that. Now I know there are some other stuff like Lords of the Sith. I know he, he does some stuff and he thinks about his past. He thinks about Ahsoka and other things like that. But Mm -hmm. I really think you're right that the, that we know the story of the original trilogy four, five and six as Luke is the the fulcrum if you will the the leverage that breaks vader so knowing Mm -hmm. that luke is ultimately the thing that pushes him over it's interesting to see 
and relive the the moment when he finds out that he does have a son and yeah, he, he can it's... just put that together right at that moment um it's great. Which before before these comics, it was that scene in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, it's his it's his I'm your father moment. It's the like reverse on Vader, which is yeah. why I love it so much. It's one. It's honestly like one of my favorite moments in Star Wars in general. Is that mm-hmm. that that panel you were talking about where, and it's in two different books as well. It's in the you know original the titular Star Wars series and the Vader series, and because it, it's just such an incredible moment. Um, and I remember talking, not to like name drop or anything, but I remember when I talked to Charles Soule, who did the the Vader series that went before that, he even remembered that too. That was one of the things that, because his, his Vader was like the bad Vader and Gillen's Vader is the one that was kind of coming out of the light. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, yeah, it's very, very, very striking. So I think, yep. I can't, I think Salvador Roca did that, who I'm usually not crazy about his art, but knocked that one out of the park for sure. Yep. Um, what else do you want to talk about in this book? Let's see here. Um, do you think that the, the conversations were handled well between Vader and Afra? <laughs> yeah. I mean, ab- about as well as you can be. I mean, Vader's not, he's, he's kind of what I expected him to be. Not much of a conversationalist and very, you know, matter of fact, anytime that she's, you know, cause when she first meets him, she's kind of like kind of giving him a little bit of grief, kind of trying to like test, feel him out a little bit, which I like that, but he's just like, you know, this flat line stoic and, you know, how she's able to pick up on the emotion, like what you mentioned about too, is by him not, cause he always has an answer for everything, not in like a smart ass kind of way, but like, he's, he's very like, no, do this. Yes, do that. Okay. If you don't do this, I'm going to kill you. That's pretty much yeah. his three go-to responses to things. Um, but like when she says things like Padme or Skywalker or, you know, like that kind of thing, she knows, she notices a pause in him. Um, and when they're like, when they're rooting around in Obi-Wan's, um, cabin on Tatooine, um, she also hears him talking to himself. Now in the comic, Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's seeing through the force what happened between Luke and Boba Fett and he's re he's vocalizing that which is really weird for him knowing that like Afra's out there so she's getting this side of vader that like no one's ever seen like the emperor probably hasn't even seen this and it so i i love that too like kind of her taking in vader from starting out as like this kind of fan like i'm your number one fan type thing to mm-hmm. really kind of seeing that there is a deeply deeply flawed individual underneath this this mask of armor and that their motives aren't quite as simple as like dominating the galaxy. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's it's totally interesting. It's like I, I don't know, like the way she kind of starts the book off, it's as if like for whatever reason she has no connection to Kanye West. <laughs> but all of a sudden Kanye West <laughs> breaks in and he's like, I want you to be my tour manager. And she's yeah, like, gosh. uh <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I would have never like if I was ever going to tour manage anybody, like Kanye West would have probably been the last person I'd pick. But I yeah, can't. I can see. I can't change the fact that if I take this job, it could be a good opportunity. And Afra herself says, "I love that word, opportunity." Um. And it, it does. It takes her straight to the top. She works for Vader for a little while, and she gets um, to to have a discussion with the, the tippy-top emperor, you know what I mean? Um, things yeah, don't go exactly the way she planned, but, um, but it did... Well, actually, things did go the way she planned, right? No, I don't think they were the optimal way that she planned them. She <laughs> there you planned go. several different scenarios, but she wasn't. I think she was hoping that the Emperor is like, "Cool, you can work for me now, and don't double cross the double crosser." That's, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. So, but but yeah, I I I thought it was interesting because the reason I brought up that originally, I said the the way that the conversations were between the characters is when you're listening to uh, a podcast or an audio book or something like that. Um, they generally don't 
they, we generally try not to have these like long pauses, but in this book, they totally embraced it because they were like, this is supposed to be like a real conversation between Vader. Uh, and when you ask him things like, you know, and I'll be able to keep all the money. He just like sits there and just breathes for like five seconds of empty breathing. And she's like, or maybe not, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, so, and that's a good point. Yeah. So I, it, it was different. It doesn't, it never really felt like somebody was like reading a script. It just kind of feels like you are the fly in the wall on these two people's conversation. And they're talking back and forth. That's really the case with anybody in the book. Um, but for the most part, when anybody asks a question or expects a response, you get the response right away with Darth Vader. It's really interesting because a lot of times he just doesn't respond. And he just has that like breathing sound. And she talks about that on a number of occasions, how intimidating he is, which we already know all this. But again, um, this is another one of those times when you actually like can partially experience it because you're waiting for him to answer. And you're like, what's going on? Why haven't any of the actors of this book spoke for, you know, seven seconds? Um, And it's because they really want you to feel like, that was a stupid question <laughs> and you're not going to get an answer to that. So, um, yeah. And you know, Sarah, Sarah Kuhn also had like a kind of a thankless job of trying to make Vader scary again and mm-hmm. well, or not trying to make Vader scary again, but like this character has been done so many times, but like, again, like I felt it felt refreshing to me. It didn't feel like a rehash of like, you know, familiar beats, even though, you know, for the most part she was, she was kind of, relying on what Gillen had established and what Jason Aaron had established as well. But, yeah. you know, she, she really did a great job of, and, and, um, I guess Mark Thompson as well, um, of, of giving us a nice spin on the character, the way that he's perceived by Afra too. Yep. And, and, uh, I, I feel, I mean, I don't I remember if we even talked about this at the beginning of our discussion, but I just feel like I have some, a different appreciation for Afra having heard, the voice and the tone and everything like that associated with Mm -hmm. the way that her character, um, develops in this story. Um, because like, like you said before, I think some of the best points in this book are, um, you know, it it is when she gets so emotional. I'll just get that out before I move on to the next point, Mm -hmm. but it's when she gets so emotional. And I think the, the kind of, the the like lando like lando chronicles like version of her yeah. story where she's totally. like retelling it or kind of like all right let me let me pick up where i left off and this is what i was doing and this is how i felt and this is how i personally feel towards these you know individuals like sana specifically like when she gets really emotional in those things like this those those types of things are the things that you just never see in the comics like they don't no. they might give you a little something like no i really did care for you but it's like these times where she's private and she's writing like a personal note to herself and in some cases she says like i know you're gonna see this so i'm really talking to you um those really are probably you know character personality changing moments you know that you get from this book if you if you think you already know dr afra because you read everything that she's in so far it's like you know there's there's a new side of her i think in this book so oh yeah for sure i'm i'm totally again like totally refreshed yeah by this book because i've I've read them all too so um well you got anything else well, like what you were saying too, I, you know, sometimes I forget that like she's, there's parts of the story that she's trying to memorialize and she's doing her version of the, you know, the Calrissian Chronicles. Yeah. Um, but, you know, those parts where she gets to things that are a little bit more delicate, a little bit more vulnerable, she kind of hits the brakes on that. And oftentimes you, you, we actually like here and another reason i thought that emily Wu Zeller did such a good job is you really get a sense like she has this dilemma like you know this is something i've 
I don't really want to remember. Do I really want to like keep this on here forever? Or do you go back and like you hear go back and forth to like editing it and then keeping it and, and what have you. So yeah. I thought locking, that was, locking I, I totally forgot so about that part. Yeah, locking it down so she can't edit it and then being like, I'll yeah, just break totally. that code later because yeah, I have to yeah. get that part out of here. I can't have that on the record. For sure, for sure. Um, no, and, and, and yeah, I mean, I think there's that... I was bummed when I heard it was like, oh, you're going to hear it from her perspective. And don't forget, she's very unreliable narrator. I was like, dang it, man, this is myths and fables all over again. I want to know what <laughs> happened. I don't know what, what, uh, what happened. Maybe, you know, yeah. I was like, that's frustrating when you tell me, when you tell me, um, I mean, it's almost like the, the star Wars equivalent of, um, the end of the book is, but it was just a dream, so none of it mattered. It's like, what a what a weird cop-out, right? I didn't want to yeah. hear Aphra's perspective on these events from, you know, the way a Han Solo-type character might embellish the story. Yes, yeah. But the I way that. that it's done is her saying... um you know, telling telling the record that she sold 5,000 credits and then off the record going, all right, it was 3,000. But 5,000 sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah. So they yeah. clear up what, what the real thing that happened was while still being like, but the character lies like that. That's the kind of person she is. She twists and all this... But when she's telling her private story, she's like, but of course that's not what really happened. What really happened was this thing. And it's like, yes, thank you. I, I love yeah. the idea that there's a character out there that embellishes their stories and and tells it the way that they want it to be remembered. But it's so great that we are doing it with a character that actually has this sort of like inner issue where she's like, I still have to be true to myself and I know what really happened. And how does this affect me as a person? Cause I want to be the best, but I don't always like what I do to get there and stuff like that. You know what I mean? She's a, yeah, totally. she's a complex character, man. <laughs> yeah, no, she really, Her I mean, that's, is, that's the other thing too, is yeah. it really just like, you're just peeling back layers, you know, now, with this and um and that's like what you said too is like you know kind of going back and forth between the you know unreliable narrator to actually stating what is happening that's yeah. another fantastic use of the medium by by kuhn is is to to throw that in there be like okay well here's you know if you want to be a canon junkie and like jot that down in your canon journal there you got that but then here's here's afra's gonna like run with that so yep um yeah yeah so it's well, anything just all else around is impressive. Anything else you want to add to the story? I think I think I'm about as discussed out as I can on this. Is I that think a word? I am too. I mean, again, just you know, fantastic cast writing, and oh, I was gonna just say what issues this takes place in, just yeah, so sure. in case people are wondering. So this is the Kieran Gillen uh, run of Darth Vader. Uh, issues number three through 17 and then she doesn't appear for a few and then it goes back to um, number 20 through 25 and then um, the Jason Aaron Star Wars issues that this appears in which also cover the Vader down which is the Gillen ones do as well are issues 13 through 19 and then after you know she concludes her run in Vader then Afra gets her own series which mm -hmm. ran its course it's uh, it ended and now there's a new one that Alyssa Wong is writing. It's the first time that um, aside from Sarah Kuhn that there's been a female writer writing it also an Asian female writer. So Alyssa Wong is uh, writing Dr. Afro. There's been one issue so far, but we're on hiatus because of COVID comic distribution stuff. But I think yeah. I, I think the second issue comes out this week. Yay. Yeah, just in time. So that's um, just a bit on the comics front if people are curious. Yeah, and for 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 funsy talk um for anybody mm -hmm. who's paying attention to like rumors and stuff like that i'll also say that there was um some rumors that were floating around a while back about dr afra being uh getting her own disney plus show or that they were kind of playing around with that and 
um you know, you know we talked about it on the resistance <laughs> broadcast which also uh, you know i'm gonna plug here at the end but yeah. um we yeah. we dive into all those rumors and stuff like that and we kind of sorted out that the the most realistic thing is that this is what that was that rumor was being tossed That's around right. is so you start to see things that are going around like hey they're casting for Dr. Afra. There's a project going on, Dr. Afra, they need they're looking for a, a female to play this character. You know what I mean? You start to hear those rumors, you start to think that probably would mean like a television show or TV series or something like that. It's it was probably this. So, if you think there's a Dr. Afra series coming, hey, I mean like I think me and Kyle both would be like welcome to the idea of it. Um, we're not saying Brilliant. that, but we are saying <laughs> that, you know, it, it, I doubt right now that that's something that's being heavily looked at. I don't think that's one of like the top tier projects that's coming up yeah. soon or anything like that. I wouldn't, so. wouldn't be surprised if she ever popped up in the Mandalorian though, but who knows if she's still out there. Yeah. But I mean, that would be I'm not right. going to, who but knows? Hey man, Mandalorian I, season two, I know it's nothing. all over the place, right? <laughs> it's like everybody's yeah. showing up. I think everybody's, right. yeah, it's <laughs> supposedly hanging out. So All right, well, that, we'll that is it then. That is it for the Dr. Afra Star Wars audiobook original. Um, and uh, that was our discussion, spoiler-filled book discussion. If you guys uh, like the video, please, if you like the discussion, uh, give, give the video a like, uh, leave us a comment, share it, uh, put it on your feed, anything, anything you can. Uh, to help us out that would be that would be wonderful um probably one of the biggest ways that you can is um you know well probably sharing but i was gonna say leave a comment and have a discussion with us let's get let's get some uh talk going on there's a lot more um to discuss about this book so feel free if you liked it you read it you have questions about it whatever throw it in the comments not only will we respond but probably other people who are watching the video and want to talk about the book um so that's a great way to yes, uh please. continue the discussion um kyle where can people find you online uh you can find me at twitter and then i am actually writing a review of this right now i spent most of the day writing it um at yep. star wars news net um so okay. yeah twitter kyle d Larson, and that's up and right now can, on star wars news net i think we can link not, it in the description. I, oh yeah it will be up when this goes up but yeah i um but yeah that'll be that'll be good to go i forgot we're we're on tuesday so. um <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's go read it right now. Yep. And uh, you guys can find me on the Resistance broadcast every Monday and Thursday. Uh, we do two hour long episodes with uh, I do it with John and Lacey. And uh, we just talk all things Star Wars, right? Discussion um, yeah. about, you know, new comics, new TV shows, movie rumors, castings. I missed all the sorts Afro episode, stuff. apparently. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a proud patron. Go check out the Resistance. It's awesome. It's <laughs> yeah. a great, great podcast. Well, and uh yep yeah, other than that you can find me on twitter at meyer trunks and uh we'll see you guys next time on the next book discussions see you around thanks for watching guys Bye.